This new desktop class external GPU dock can really up your performance on your handheld or even your mini PC, whether it supports Thunderbolt 4, USB 4, Thunderbolt 3, or even Oculink. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the brand new AUSTAR XG76 XT eGPU expansion card. And over the past year or so, we've actually seen a lot of the mini PC manufacturers and even a lot of the handheld manufacturers out there release eGPUs powered by something like the RX 7600M XT, but we haven't seen one with a desktop class AMD card yet, until now with the XG76 XT because this is actually rocking the desktop variant of the Radeon RX 7600 XT. It's the non-mobile variant, and it's not something we've seen before. We get higher boost clocks, higher TGP, and overall we should see better performance out of this unit. But the one thing I really do like about this is the form factor itself. It's coming in much smaller than other eGPUs on the market, and you can throw this right in the bag. Now, of course, you do need an external power supply with this, and inside of the box, you're going to get a Thunderbolt 4 or a USB 4 cable and a 330 watt power supply. This will support up to 100 watt PD charging out. And when it comes to I.O., over here, we've got a full size HDMI port, two full size display ports, USB Type-C, and this one's a 3.2 port. It supports Oculink and USB 4, plus we have our power input. And given the fact that this does support that 100 watt charging out, it's great for handhelds and mini PCs that support power over USB Type-C. That way you don't need two power supplies connected. All you need is that single power supply connected to the eGPU itself. And from there, everything's gonna be powered over USB 4. A couple different orientations we can go with this. It will set vertically because uh, we have our intake vent right there on the top of the unit. It's gonna exhaust out of the top if we have it set vertically. And of course, we can set it horizontally to keep that size down. There's an LED indicator on the front to let you know everything's connected properly. And when it comes to the overall specs, there's actually a few extras here. So like I mentioned, we've got the AMD Radeon RX 7600 XT, 150 watt full power, 2755 megahertz core clock, 32 compute units, 32 megabytes of infinity cache, and 8 gigabytes of GDDR6. It does support Oculink at a full 64 gig transfer speed, and that's going to give you the best performance out of this external GPU. But when it comes to USB 4, it's more widely adopted. I mean, we've got a ton of devices with USB 4 and Thunderbolt 4. Luckily, this is actually a PCIe X4 4.0 connection over USB 4. Most of the time when we see devices like this, it's actually X4 3.0. So when it comes to transfer speeds, there's a chance we'll get a little more out of this over USB 4, but it is a full 40 gig protocol. In this video, I'm going to be testing this eGPU with one of my newest x86 handhelds, and this is actually the brand new MSI Claw 2. Well, that's what I call it, but it's the MSI Claw 7 AI+. Plus. It's the brand new model with the Intel Core Ultra 258V. So I've just connected USB 4, well it's Thunderbolt 4 because we've got an Intel chip here with the new MSI Claw 7 AI+. You can see we've got those two LED indicators up front. Battery on the Claw is charging from the eGPU and all of our video is going to be sent out of that 7600 over to my monitor. And now, just so I can give you a closer look, I'm going to connect this to my game capture. Before we get into testing, a few things I wanted to show you here. As you can see, we're on the Intel Core Ultra 7 258V in the new Claw 2 or the Claw 7 AI+. 32 gigs of system RAM. We've still got access to the Intel Arc 140 VI GPU, but instead of using that, obviously we're going to be using the AMD Radeon RX 7600 XT. And in the past, we've seen the RX 7600 MXT in an eGPU form factor. Well, there's several out there on the market. This is the full-fledged desktop version here. And to give you an idea about the connection itself, this dock is actually running at X4 4.0, usually testing over USB 4, Thunderbolt 4, even Thunderbolt 3, we're at X4 3.0. And if I put a load on it, you can see this doesn't change at all. So we are at X4 4.0. Next thing here, I just wanted to show you what this thing will draw, so we're going to max this out in Furmark. Right here, chip power draw up to 150 watts with this GPU. So we can get full power out of the 7600 XT here. And of course, we're still going to be a bit limited by the bandwidth, but what I've been testing so far works really, really well. The first thing I want to do here is give you a look at a few benchmarks that I ran on this setup. 
And the first one we have here is the OpenCL test in Geekbench 6 for the GPU. We scored an 82,203. And just to kind of give you an idea, over on their website, you can browse all of the benchmarks. The 7600 XT, which is usually inside of a desktop system, 83,946. And the 7600 MXT, which is the mobile variant, 75,000. So yeah, I mean, we're getting real close to that. I figured we'd lose a little over USB 4, but we're not pumping out any video signal. This is just kind of a synthetic OpenCL test, so we got real, real close. Next up, 3D Mark Firestrike. Total score here, 21,865. 29,000 on that graphic score. And finally, we've got Time Spy with the total score here paired up with the MSI Claw 7 AI Plus, 10,154. And our graphic score is 10,705. Doing a little bit of a comparison here, the full desktop Radeon RX 7600 XT, 11,250. So we are losing just a bit over USB 4, and of course we knew we would. But you can see that the 7600 MXT is coming in way below with only an 8,752 score. When I first saw this eGPU dock and noticed that it wasn't an M, I was a little worried that they were going to market it like that and it would end up being the M. But everything I've tested so far leads me to believe that we've got a real desktop variant in this eGPU dock. Now it's time to see how this thing performs. And usually over USB 4 with something like this, we'd go down to 1080. But I've been doing some testing and it looks like this definitely handles 1440, at least when it's paired up with the MSI Claw 7 AI Plus. Cyberpunk 2077, 1440, high, with FSR set to balanced, we're seeing an average of around 78 FPS. And I've always thought of the RX 7600 XT as kind of a ultra 1080 or maybe even a high medium 1440 card. Checking out Spider-Man Miles Morales, we're at 1440p, very high with FSR set to quality. It is an easier one to run nowadays uh, with all of the optimizations, especially on AMD cards. I mean, this does perform really well, as you can see from Afterburner. We're over 100 FPS on average, but the most impressive thing you got to keep in mind here is we're running this GPU over Thunderbolt 4. Forza Horizon 5, 1440, Ultra, and I kind of wanted to go to Extreme, but if you take a look at that frame rate up there, we're seeing an average of around 78. I do think at Extreme it would be a little much with that ray tracing on, but overall, I mean, it runs great at Ultra. Now we're just getting into a couple games that are harder to run, and with something like Horizon Zero Dawn Remastered, if you want to go up to 1440, very high, on a card like this over USB 4, frame gen is going to be your best friend. That's the only way I could get it over 60. Without it enabled, we're seeing an average of around 54, but as soon as we turn frame gen on, average jumps up to around 91. And the same goes for Black Myth Wukong. 1440, high, I needed to enable frame gen. So if you don't want to go down to 50% scaling and medium settings, frame gen is really going to be where it's at. And it does work great on these cards like this. I mean, as opposed to, let's say, an iGPU. Of course, if we were just using the iGPU, we could still use it. But we've got a lot more power to work with here, and it just makes it a breeze generating those extra frames. The last thing I wanted to talk about here were temperatures and total power consumption. Remember, this GPU can pull 150 watts, and that's just on the GPU side of things. It's actually staying way cooler than I thought it would, and it really comes down to their new cooling system they implemented. It doesn't sound like a jet plane, but it's not a totally silent operation. That fan does need to spin up to get some air moving. But our average GPU temps here were only 70 degrees while gaming here at 1440p, and the maximum I saw it hit was 76. I think that's pretty decent for what we've got going on. And as for total system power consumption, I tested with that new Claw 7 AI Plus, which does 65 watt charging. With the battery charging over USB 4 at up to 65 watts, 1080p gaming, this drew a total of 211 watts from the wall, and at 1440, 
up to 232 watts. This does come with a 330 watt power supply, so let's say you wanted to connect the ROG Ally X, which actually charges it up to 100 watts, you've still got more than enough from that PSU. Overall, I think we're seeing some great performance out of this over USB 4, and I will be doing some Oculink testing, but I wanted to get this out of the way first because more devices out there that we carry around have USB 4 or Thunderbolt 4. So I figured I'd get this one out of the way first, and if you're interested in seeing some Oculink performance, let me know in the comments below. Of course, we'll see higher frame rates over Oculink because we've got a faster connection, but it's up to you. Just let me know down below. And if you're interested in learning a little more about the Eustar AG76XT, I'll leave some links in the description. But that's going to wrap it up for this video, and like always, thanks for watching.